Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. I'm Rob Black talking money, investing, and more. I have some notes in front of me to start today's show. NASDAQ's up 17% year to date. The NAS, S&P 500 is up 9. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 2.9%. That's almost an exact flip-flop from last year, where we saw value outperform growth. This year, growth is outperforming value. I looked at some of the recent winners this year, and Microsoft and NVIDIA are both having crazy good years. I look at the clock, and the United States is on the clock, in my opinion, for the debt ceiling, which is coming up June 1. Could that cause the market a little bit of turmoil and a little bit of pullback? Yes. The Fed Reserve meets on Wednesday. Could that cause some pullback? Yes. Both of those events could pop, cause markets to feel relief but both can cause the markets to feel anxiety. We have a jobs report on Friday. Eh, That one doesn't feel as important. We know the labor market's healthy, probably a little bit too healthy, creating too much inflation. You can see some job cuts in the last uh, two weeks during earnings season. Some of them are hitting the financial. Some of them are hitting restaurants like McDonald's is cutting corporate jobs. That's a good thing if you want to fight inflation. And ultimately, for better or for worse, we are in the mode of fighting inflation. Due to the pandemic and due to supply chains that got goofed up, whether it was China's zero COVID policy or whether it was shipping logistics and COVID shutting down various factories here and there. This is something we haven't done before. Ultimately, I am a lot more, what is the word, constructive 18 months into this, probably about 16 to 18, right? Then I was six months ago, nine months ago. I cannot say with certainty because that is legal, but I think we'll be in a better place a year from now. Short term, I'm going to repeat it. The NASDAQ's up 17% for the year. I am not expecting it to go up 24% for the year. Unfortunately, another thing that's causing problems in the market right now are Apple and Microsoft's performance are helping the S&P 500 and helping the NASDAQ because it's market-weighted indices. So if you don't own those two stocks, you're probably not feeling as wealthy as up 17% because they're both up 30% plus. So where do we go from here? That's a really, really good question. I think we stay constructive. We expect pullbacks. If you have big winners, maybe you take a little bit off the table, if that's your thing to do. For me, I don't mind underperforming in the short term, as long as I'm constructed for the long term and midterm. Yesterday, NASDAQ, SP500, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average were all in the red. Bitcoin was down 4%. There's another Bitcoin exchange that looks like it's about to fail. Chegg down 37%. Why was Chegg? They sell educational products for colleges. Oh, chat GPT said that their business is disappearing quickly because of chat GPT. So there is some reality to it it hurting and taking jobs. Stocks bobbled yesterday. Nothing great. A little up, a little down, a little up, a little down. Think of that cuckoo bird uh, that you see on some people's desk that bobs up and down. I think it's a cuckoo bird. Maybe it's an ostrich. I don't know. JP Morgan took over First Republic and its affluent client list in return for $10.6 billion paid regulators and other financial concessions. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. JP Morgan didn't want anything to do with the first one, Silicon Valley Bank, but they're more than willing to take a massive discount to acquire First Republic. And JP Morgan stock went up yesterday because of it. 
Regulators are planning the FDIC Insurance Corporation recommend raising the $250,000 deposit insurance limit for businesses to make business people less likely to drive banks into the ground when they tweet about their anxiety and losing their deposits. That is a very good idea. And make sure you charge for it because insurance is not free. Oh, I want life insurance just in case a coconut falls off a tree and, and kills me. I want $10 million. Well, you're going to probably have to pay $10 for that because the odds are coconut's not going to fall off a tree and hit you unless you live in Hawaii and have a job of a coconut uh, chopper downer. What else do we need to hit as far as today goes? The Hollywood writers are on strike after failing to reach a deal with the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers. The Writers Guild of America went on strike at midnight. Union tries to negotiate a contract that takes the new strategic centric AI enabled landscape into account, plus streaming. Keep in mind, we used to do television series that would last 20 episodes per year. Now it's eight to 12 is the common. So when you sit down Game of Thrones and House of Dragon and Succession, understand the writers, they used to get residuals when that would go into reruns. There are no more reruns in streaming that it's perpetual. So things have changed and they probably should renegotiate. I think it would be in everyone's best interest to settle sooner rather than later because we know in the end they're going to settle. Um, just how much can they dig in? When does when do you lose your access to Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon because they don't have writing staffs? I don't know. Some environmental groups are suing the FAA over SpaceX's launch. That's a little bit of interesting note. The man who created ChatGPT, the godfather of artificial intelligence, it's probably the right way of saying it. He left Google after 10 years, and he said that he's, he's a little bit afraid of the dangers of AI, and he's a little bit excited about the opportunities. Hinton is his name, Jeffrey Hinton. His primary fear is the proliferation of AI-generated content will make it difficult to know what's real, something many of us have fallen victim to, the Pope in a puffer jacket. Joe Rogan, someone did a whole Joe Rogan show, and Joe Rogan said, that's not me. And even during the podcast, the one-hour podcast that was created, the fake Joe Rogan said, this is a fake Joe Rogan. It's and this is where, believe it or not, where I may be getting excited about Ethereum and the blockchain. We're going to have to have digital signatures on this show because someone could copy it and get me fired. You know, if if you start hearing sell, 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 I hate socks. That's probably a chat GPT version of me, right? Um, so we're going to either need regulation or we're going to need the big companies who are going to control to really start thinking it through. The Met Gala went on last night. I can't say that that is interesting at all to me. There's some extreme fashion, which I think if you like extreme fashion, that's your thing. I, I probably like great cinematography in movies. Like we all have our little, little buzzes, right? Um, what else do we have? The government appointed board that's overseeing the special tax district for Disney World voted to counter sue Disney in the latest move in the ongoing feud between the House of Mouse and Florida Governor Grand, uh, Ron DeSantis. It appears that he's losing quickly his chances of being president because he's going aggressively after Disney. There's a joke on Wall Street that uh, Disney is really just a bunch of lawyers that own, own a theme park. They aggressively fight aggressively fight for legislation that benefits them. And that could be a kindergarten that uses a Mickey Mouse character on its wall. Oh, no, you don't. So they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty tough. Las Vegas saw tourism rise to pre-COVID levels in March, partly thanks to a boost from Taylor Swift's Eras tour. That's how important she is. Isn't that crazy? When she does a three-day show... She takes over a town and mayors give her like the key to the city and everything and say, thank you for bringing tourists to our town. There's a really funny, I guess, TikTok video of what it's like to be in the subway when a Taylor concert, Taylor Swift concert gets out 
it's this rush of 25 year old women getting into the subway and it's one after the other, after the other, after the other, after the other. And I'm like, Oh, I do not want to be there. Um, that's too much test, not testosterone, but estrogen, right? So, uh, not that I have a lot of est- uh, testosterone. <laughs> Let me get my words right today, right? Oh, chat GPT, save me. So a tiny a litany, I'm sorry, not a tiny litany, but a, a big litany of earning reports have been released. Uber was really solid. And I'm here to say, ladies and gentlemen, Uber is beaten left. And you will not find me saying, which one is the right one to own? Uber wins. But also Ubers push themselves to the point where I no longer take them. Like when I used to go to the airport, I'd order an Uber and way too many rides get canceled and it's expensive now. I think I'm almost out of time here. Uber, Pfizer, Latis Semiconductor, disappointing revenue guidance from uh, oh Uber, Pfizer, and uh, Latis Semiconductor, all solid numbers. Disappointing revenue guidance from Chegg. And they're blaming the adverse effects of chat GPT. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial. Morgan Stanley said they're going to cut 3,000 jobs in the second quarter, mainly from its banking and investment units. IBM is going to pause on hiring for jobs that it thinks can be done with artificial intelligence. March factory orders and March jolts report. Coming up in just a few minutes on Wall Street, the jolts is the job openings. That's an important one. It kind of ties in with jobs in the United States. We want to see that number shrink, not go higher. This Sunday, join Rob Black in San Rafael for Pints and Portfolios, a less formal event at a local watering hole for those close to retirement with 500000 or more in investable assets. Drop by Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4 for a little sunshine, some financial chit-chat, and a complimentary portfolio review or financial snapshot from Dan Fetterman, CFP from EP Wealth Advisors. Whether you're on the road to retirement or already there, this financial snapshot can provide you with a second opinion analysis of where you are and highlight areas for improvement and opportunities for growth. Go to robblackshow.com and click the events tab. Find Pints and Portfolios and click to register. You'll answer a few simple questions about your situation and your confirmation email will provide all the details on the event and how to schedule your portfolio review. Space is limited and registration is required, so go to robblackshow.com today. That's robblackshow.com. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing, and more. You've been listening to the show, maybe if you're a true Raw Black fan, also known as a black head for roughly 25 years. 25 years ago, I came across a man named Dan Fetterman, who was incredibly bright. And I said, you've ever thought about working in the industry because we need more bright people. Next thing you know, he's a CFP and he and I are working together. He's going to be joining me for an event in Marin, in San Rafael, one mile off the highway. It's going to be the first of its kind. It may be a hit. It may be a miss, but we're going to do it again and again and again until it works. We're going to figure it out because I like something non-seminar type of events where I get to meet with individuals who have portfolios of $500,000 more and want second opinions. CFP Dan Fetterman works with CFP Chad Burton. Uh, Dan, how are you doing today? Uh, good. How are you doing, Rob? Good. Um, great start. Um, you're going to be offering, or you and I are going to be meeting Sunday. It'll be nice. We'll be able to sit in the sunshine, uh, enjoy the spring slash summer like weather, whatever it's going to be, as the weather changes often in Marin. You're going to be offering a free financial snapshot. Um, tell us a little bit about um, what you're going to be offering. What's in a financial snapshot? What can people expect? Well, um, you know, everyone's situation is different. And uh, right. if you think of like a puzzle, if you, um, you know, if you're missing a, a piece of the puzzle, uh, you can't really complete it. And so when, when I, when we talk about portfolio reviews, uh, it's hard to look at it in a vacuum, you know? Um, uh, and, and what I mean by that is someone could have a bunch of, uh, Tesla and Apple and, and be worth $10 million, but that doesn't tell me the whole picture. So 
I, I need to know, you know, if they're married, um, you know, what their income is, when do they want to retire, uh, what kind of, what were their tax situations like, uh, you know, are they in a, some people have $5 million, $10 million of assets, but they could be in the lowest income tax bracket because they're retired and they're living off their assets. And then there's others who are still accumulating and in a very high tax bracket uh, due to, you know, income or salary bonus uh, stock options. And, and maybe they've only been deferring to uh, most of their savings into pre-tax assets. So part of the snapshot is just putting to keep, putting the pieces of the puzzle together. So that's kind of how I look at it. So I should let people know you have to sign up. You have to answer some questions to give Dan some perspective. Um, you sign up at Rob Black Show under the events page, Pints and Portfolios, Sunday, one to four. You answer the questions, then we're going to tell you where it is because we don't want just average people showing up. My company is a little bit critical of that. Um, we cannot do the portfolio review on site. That would be a little bit, how shall we say, unethical when there's alcohol potentially involved. Um, so Dan's going to set up an appointment with you to do a Zoom review, 30 minutes, maybe a little bit longer, see how long it takes to give you kind of a snapshot. We all are are different. And I use a CFP. I use Brad at uh, EP Wealth with, he's under chat as well. And he's doing complicated things for me. He's moving money around from my uh, IRA to my Roth. He's helping me with an estate plan. He's updating the estate plan. He's helping me with projections on my kids. He's helping me um, because I do have a lot of Apple with a, a, a strategy to generate income while I hold on to those shares on top of the dividends that the company pays. So a CFP could really offer quite a bit. Um, Let's talk a little bit about what you just mentioned, um, having assets and, and just kind of thinking you're wealthy because it's a number and not really understanding how you're going to craft that wealth into your lifestyle uh, in retirement. You and I recently mm -hmm. came across a man who he was doing OK, him and his wife and his four children. But then there became an inheritance that was a little bit unexpected in timing. And he didn't realize like. Oh, is this look good? How good is this? And it, I, when he talked to me, I was like, you just hit the lottery in a lot of levels. You are well-funded into retirement for many, many, many years. And you have enough now that you could leave some to your children. And he's like, really? Um, and then I just introduced him to you and you, you kind of went through that process, but you had to do a lot of data collection. Um, anything else that we should hit on, on pints and portfolios this Sunday as we're promoting it today? Um. I, I think just just to reiterate that everyone's situation is different, and, and yeah. the case you mentioned with the inheritance, uh, what, what was interesting is, you know, money doesn't come with instructions, and, and he was basically coming to you saying, Rob, what do I do? And uh, you, you put him in touch with, with me to do a, basically a portfolio review, but I had a bunch of questions, and... Uh, you know, we, we needed to review the, the person's or the, the couple's uh, goals, their whole situation. Um, and, and they have a lot of they have questions like they plan to sell a, a home and, and build a new one. Now yep. that they have all this inheritance uh, money, they can afford to perhaps pay cash. But maybe it does make sense for them to take on a little bit of a mortgage. So. Right. Uh, th those are the kind of things that I would want to discuss in in the the half hour review with with anyone who wants to uh, come and join us for the Pints and Portfolios event. I'm looking forward to it, Dan. And um, speaking of that same person again, like he had his money in a regular bank, and you're like, let's get your you know high yield. Um, and I love scenarios like that where you get to help people and you get to see the direct influence that it has on them. He sent me an email after he worked with you and he's like, that was, you just made my wife wildly happy. And uh, that's the biggest compliment, Dan. So um, I give you a big thumbs up on that one. And I'll see you on Sunday. Thanks for calling in. It's right. CFP Thanks, Dan Ron. Fetterman, CFP Dan Fetterman. Um, I've known him for 25. I've known him longer than I've known Chad. That's crazy. I knew him when I was like, I wonder if he's ever going to find a spouse. And he found a spouse. And I was like, I wonder if he's ever going to have a kid. And he found and he didn't find a kid, but he has a child. He's a really good guy. And I love working with CFPs who are good people. 
um, because they get the, the math stuff that I don't want to do myself. And I'll give you an example. I was working with CFP Brad at uh, used to be New Focus. Now it's EP Wealth. And Brad was like, uh, I was like, yeah, you know, the, our vacations, he was looking at our budget and he goes, you spend a lot on ski vacations. You ever thought about buying a, a chalet or something? Um, and a chalet is just, i.e. a house. Okay. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I've never really thought of myself as buying real estate at all time highs all the time. And yet, you know, in review, I bought a house in my 20s and my 30s and my 40s and my 50s. Um, and I'll probably buy a house sometime in my mid 50s as my retirement home. And I just took the family down to San Diego to scope it out and see, you know, with areas that I could potentially have a one level close to the sand. Um, warmth. I must like Mexican food and I can check that box. Yes, 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 yes. And uh, even my radio producer gave me a Mexican restaurant to try out and it was delicious. So um, with that out there, um, I think a good CFP, he said, you know, if you get a home in the mountains, you can teach your kids to ski and you're not paying someone an Airbnb, which we should talk about in just a second Airbnb because they're in the headlines again for all the wrong reasons. Um, he said, your kids will never forget that. And to be honest with you, it's it's their fortress of solitude. I didn't grow up liking Superman comic books, but I really love the idea where a, a grown man can go and brood. And anytime I'm feeling a little stress or anxiety, I, I go to the mountains, get some fresh air, and I look at the trees and I go, ah, refreshing. So Airbnb is in the news today. There's an article on them that's basically saying, you know, look at ha look what happened here. And people are, and this happened to me, but not with an Airbnb. When I bought my home two years ago, roughly, um, it was beautiful. And it was listed in all the MLS and it was professionally shot and it was in magazines and things like that. Some jerk took the listing and put it on as a rental on Craigslist. If you're doing business on Craigslist, I'm not going to say in shame on you. I'm saying be careful. Buyer beware. So people started showing up at my home. Uh, fortunately, uh, landlords, not landlords, but uh, rental agents showed up and said, can we see your home? Because we want to, you know, we got some families that want to move into it. I'm like, it's not for rent. Get out of here. And I didn't have a gun, but holy mackerel. Have you seen the stories about people knocking on doors with gun owners? Um, so it's happening with Airbnb of fake listings now. And also some bait and switches where they're like, it's a Hollywood home for rent. And then you pay $3,000 for it. You show up at the Hollywood home. But right before you show up, the fake owner sends you a message that says, whoops, actually, the, the it's on uh, it's two miles to the west. You're actually at the wrong address. So he has a home. It's just not the one that's being advertised. And it's obnoxious. If my vacation ever got ruined, and again, that's something Airbnb and VRBO are going to have to deal with, fake listings. And ultimately, too much trust in the system. When you when you pay Hilton on Hawaii, you know you're going to, there's a building there. When you pay Airbnb or you do a Craigslist scenario, you don't necessarily know. And more and more Americans get frauded with one simple thing, the, the letter, a text that says H-I, hi. Do you think we can be defrauded and, and taken of our money um, with a beautiful home on a vacation site? Sure, we could. If H-I can get us, buyer beware. Um, so I'd say if you're planning a vacation, you're going to Airbnb, which I still like. Just do a little extra research on the site. Do a little extra research on the owner if you can. Ask a couple more questions. I know, I know. Sounds like work. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. Visit the Rob Black Show online at robblackshow.com. Listen to archive podcasts, market updates, and information from EP Wealth's certified financial planners online at robblackshow.com. Let's hit some hints, tips, and tricks. High net worth individuals are especially adept at turning their money into even more money. There's some tricks of the trade that can be used to boost your accounts. For instance, I use high yield savings accounts. I 
have some money at the Bank of America for day to day operations. Most of my money is in a company called Flourish, F-L-O-U-R-I-S-H. It's an institutional account that is a bank account. It is FDIC insured more than covering what I have in there. Also, I put my spouse on my FDIC accounts and she puts me on her. So we double our coverage automatically. Then we put our children on just in case we both die quadruples our coverage. Annual interest rates have perked up in recent months in lines with actions taken by the Federal Reserve. I'm getting 4.3% on my money. I think I could push it as far as 4.9%, but I'm fine with mine as it is. Um, Flourish Cash and Max My Interest are two leading cash management programs that you can use to automate your cash savings process. So my cash, cash every month. My emergency, a little baby emergency fund every month. Annual retirement plan contributions, whether it's a 401k or 403b, the limits now are set at 22500 And if you're 50 or older, you can make another 7500 for the year. Beyond making the maximum contribution, there are other tips and tricks millionaires use to boost their retirement savings in employer-sponsored plans. You can possibly make both a traditional and Roth after-tax contribution. It's best to check with your retirement plan sponsor. I've opened a save, health savings account, something wealthy people do. Think of a health savings account as a Roth IRA for healthcare expenses. They are triple tax free. Contributions, capital gains, and distributions are not taxed, provided the latter is taken for qualified out of pocket medical expenses. To open a HSA, you must participate in a high deductible healthcare plan, which the IRS has defined in 2023 to be a plan with a deductible of at least $1,500 for individuals and $3,000 for families. Individuals can contribute up to $3,850 each year for self-only coverage or $7,750 for family coverage. Another tip, hit trick, hack to getting wealthy is investing in the market as early as you can. If you don't understand stocks, just buy an ETF like VTI, live below your means, invest the uh, what you can. Once you have a little money, it grows at a phenomenal rate over time. Um, someone asked me, they have $30,000 and they want to come to my meet and greet. That is this Sunday in Marin. And I'm like, $30,000 is not enough to work with a financial advisor. You should be using a robo advisor. In my opinion, um, think of it as a lawyer. You don't need a lawyer for a speeding ticket. You need a lawyer for murder and murder in this case is, uh, the, the high net worth people versus the small misdemeanor charges, so to speak. I know. Um, so CFPs really can't be useful to you until you get that 500,000 roughly. Robo advisors typically charge less than 1%. They're down at one quarter of 1%, typically to one half percent. Then you graduate later in the life and you do the 1% with a CFP as you accumulate wealth. Hints, tips, tricks. How about mistakes that people make? Um, spending money they don't have on credit cards. So how about just spending money that you don't have? I think that sounds pretty obvious to me. Um, a lot of people get into trouble thinking I'll catch up next month. And then look at this year. Holy mackerel. It's already May. Right. And do you remember when we were looking at 2000 or 2000? We're like, Wow, I thought things were going to be really cool in 2000. And then, bam, you wake up and it's 2023. Another mistake people make is carrying bad debt. Uh, credit card debt, I think, is bad debt. Personal loans with high interest rates, bad debt. Anything over 6% is probably going to drag you down if you carry it for too long. Mortgage debt, if it's at 6%, I can make a case for it, but... That's where it starts. You start looking at renting versus owning, in my opinion. You should always look at renting versus owning. You should always run the numbers to see how comfortable you are with whatever scenario you put yourself into. Big mistake I see people make is taking money out of the stock market. Thinking I'll put it back in. And I've already done one segment recently. 
that I talked about how the markets had a great run for the first half of the year. Probably shouldn't have a great run in the second half if we have a pending recession. But again, that's not guaranteed because the jobs report is so strong, but inflation is still high. So we could get something called stagflation. If you don't know about stagflation, go to chat GPT and say, how do investments work in stagflation? It's not pretty. You have to know what you're doing. Another mistake I see people make, financially speaking, is taking Social Security too early. Just because you can receive Social Security at age 62 doesn't mean you should immediately apply for benefits. The decision to draw Social Security early can be an expensive money mistake. If you were to get $1,740 at age 62, if you wait until 65, you get 2235 so 1740 to 2235 That's an extra $492 a month. That adds up. It's almost $6,000 per year. How about leaving money on the table? If you have a 401k at your work and you're not taking advantage of a company match because you don't trust Wall Street, then you're leaving one, two, three, four, five percent of money on the table where your company was going to give it to you. Um, those are some of the popular mistakes people make. And again, I see it all too often. If you'd like to meet with a CFP, um, some documents that you would want to bring to a CFP would be your current holdings. Um, you'd want to pull your last year's taxes. If you have a mortgage, maybe a mortgage statement. It's good to know what to bring, so to speak. Your assets, your liabilities, your goals. You want to write all that stuff down. If you want to meet with a CFP, come to Pints and Portfolio this weekend. Sign up at Rob Black Show under Pints and Portfolio. RobLackShow.com. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at RobBlack.com. That's robblack.com, powered by EP Wealth. I know there's a lot of lawsuits going on, and I don't think any of us really like talking lawsuits. The one way that I can put this back on you and I is say that if you own a home and you love dogs, strongly consider what is the right dog to own to protect your finances. I know he's man's best friend, but German shepherds and pit bulls, no thank you. Not for me. Now, again, you could say they're so lovable. Um, I had a, an electrician here yesterday at my home, and he said that he just went to a previous job where a, he walked into a home. He walked up to a home, and the door was open, so he knocked on it. Um kind of yelled a hello in and a German shepherd chased him down the driveway. And, you know, ultimately he got on top of his truck. The owner comes out, calms the dog down and says, you know, he would have killed you, but he really is a sweet dog. And that's probably the dumbest human being on the planet right now to have a dog that can kill a human being. If you want to keep your home, if your dog kills my dog or if your dog kills my son, I'm taking every penny in the world from you. Um, I don't know. And again, you're saying you're going harsh, Rob. You, you it just, and I don't know breeds and I'm not, this isn't Rob Black and your talking pet show. Hey, I'm talking money, but breeds are important. I've got a breed of dog that will probably lick you to death if given enough time and, and treats. Um, so lawyers come into this in my head and I, I don't have to sue someone and I don't want to sue someone, but uh, if your dog is, isn't in control, yeah, there's going to be a problem. Um, either <laughs> I'm not going to say anything that gets me canceled, but let's just say uh, John Wick will be called John Wick dog exterminator. I love dogs. I need to do a public service announcement. Rob Black likes dogs. And now you know. You know one attorney that I would never mess with? Gwyneth Paltrow. I think she should have her own show. That woman is cold-blooded. 76-year-old retired optometrist claimed she was at fault for a skiing accident. Again, 
don't go skiing if you can't afford a broken leg is my opinion I know, I know. You're saying you're very opinionated today, Mr. Black. Very opinionated, and maybe I am. Get this. People put nearly $1 billion to Apple savings accounts in the first four days. Uh, I own shares of Apple, and I'll be honest with you. I can't say this with complete confidence, but there's a chance that I own shares of Apple when I die. The company continues to dig a deeper and deeper moat around their ecosystem. And yet their ecosystem goes vertically higher and higher. Who in their mind would have thought that company that makes those Mac computers that were had those shadow dancers and TV commercials that had a really cute iPod? I know you're saying an iPod. Do you know what uh, MP3 players looked like before? The cute little iPod? They were like bricks. They were like shoeboxes. I remember going out on, on dates. I'm like, let me bring my shoebox. And she's like, what's that? I'm like, that's 10,000 songs that I stole from Napster. And then I'm like, oh, as you grow up, you're like, no, I shouldn't really steal music. So they've all been deleted. But Apple comes along and says, you want 10,000 songs? Them and Spotify, who I think is a great company. And I wish I could find a way to own Spotify. I haven't found it yet. But their total addressable market is in the billions, the TAM. And that is the number one thing that attracts me to tech companies. It's not the tech, it's the addressable market size. People put nearly a billion dollars into savings accounts. If, if you thought that that company that made the Purple Max and the Red Max, if you thought that the company that did the 1984 commercial, was ever going to have a bank account yielding over 4%, a savings account, I would give you a bazillion dollars if you can go back and show me that you wrote that idea down 20 years ago. And I don't really have a bazillion dollars, so the offer is not for real. Marcus offers just 3.9%. Apple's at 4.15, which I think is brilliant. And again, once your money is there, do you really want to cancel your phone and have them send you a check? And probably not. Just throwing that down there for you, ladies and gentlemen. I think that was a brilliant move. Joe Rogan issued a dire warning about artificial intelligence after a fake version of his podcast was created 100% through AI technology. He listened to it and it, I listened to it and it is creepy as hell because it, it's it's good enough for a radio show. I've heard radio shows that sound worse. You know, the guys who call in on their phones and it sounds kind of like this, the whole show. This actually sounded like a real podcast. I think that's fascinating and scary to the point that at some point I imagine my podcast company and my radio company will say, look, Rob, we're going to verify it's you. And the way we're going to verify it's you and your audience is going to know it's you, a true source of information, is probably tied towards technology in the, in the blockchain. Do you need that kind of information? I think you do. I think you're going to need that kind of reassurance down the road. The real life Rogan was ill at ease after the episode dropped. He thinks it's going to be slippery. Uh, Microsoft has invested heavily in the AI of boom. The tech giant's been the investor in OpenAI, the company that developed ChatGPT since 2019, just since 2019. Microsoft announced an extension of the partnership with OpenAI through a multi-year, multi-billion dollar investment. So you heard about Microsoft throwing billions at ChatGPT recently. The company's now well-funded. What are they going to create now that they're well-funded? And there's all sorts of ripoffs already and companies that do something similar. I was listening to a CEO with Evan Spiegel, the CEO of Snap, and they have an AI source. And I do like Snap, and I, I think they're going to be a nice division of Google or Apple someday, maybe Sony, uh, possibly Samsung. Um, they really get social media as a visual relationship between me and you, a visual connection. And I think... Um, the CEO of Snap, he, he's well thought out and, and measured, whereas I think um, Elon Musk, not so well thought out and measured. So Joe Rogan's in the news. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. 
um, taking a look at the stories of the day. Strength from mega cap stocks, weak manufacturing for the Eurozone, Germany, France, Italy, Spain, the UK. Janet Yellen warning the debt ceiling is less than one month away. This is going to be a problem for Wall Street as we get closer and closer. Um, in my opinion, that doesn't mean it'll happen. There's no guarantees. I guarantee there's no guarantee. That's the only guarantee. Strength in healthcare, consumer discretionary, and technology day, weakness in energy, materials, communications. Big event coming up called Pints and Portfolios. It's exactly what it sounds like, a portfolio review. And I'll even buy you a beer in Miranda. Sign up for the event this Sunday. Go to Rob Black's show. Hit Pints and Portfolios. Listen to the commercial as well. This Sunday, join Rob Black in San Rafael for Pints and Portfolios, a less formal event at a local watering hole for those close to retirement with 500000 or more in investable assets. Drop by Sunday afternoon from 1 to 4 for a little sunshine, some financial chit-chat, and a complimentary portfolio review or financial snapshot from Dan Fetterman, CFP from EP Wealth Advisors. Whether you're on the road to retirement or already there, this financial snapshot can provide you with a second opinion analysis of where you are and highlight areas for improvement and opportunities for growth. Go to robblackshow.com and click the events tab. Find Pints and Portfolios and click to register. You'll answer a few simple questions about your situation and your confirmation email will provide all the details on the event and how to schedule your portfolio review. Space is limited and registration is required. So go to robblackshow.com today. That's robblackshow.com. Do you remember your first cell phone, your first beeper maybe? Do you remember car radios and how fun they used to be? And I saw the coolest thing the other day. And it was just, I was walking my dog. 0110110. And as we walk by a car, I'm like, they got a cassette deck in their car. And it was just a throwback to those days in high school and college where, oh, I wasn't the best at with my, at my, my love game. But Early on, I'd, I'd record all my favorite songs, and I'd, eventually I'd give them to the girl on CD, but early on, it was on cassettes back in high school. But uh, it was a nice throwback for me. It made me smile. Do you remember your first Uber drive? I do. It freaked me out. And it was a friend's house, and um, we were going to dinner, and uh, it was like, let's let's order a ride i'm like what do you mean i don't want to order a cab cabs are a pain in the butts they don't show like they no no they're smelling they yell at me no she said no and um she's an attractive human being and i'm like you're gonna trust getting in a car with this person and yes and you know she pulls up the app and you can see the smiling face of the driver and her her trip approvals and all that good stuff. And sure enough, the little dot started coming around and it got closer and closer and closer and closer. And boom, there it was. And I remember my first Uber drive. Um, well, and then there was like, well, I kind of like lift a little more than Uber because Uber has got this CEO, Travis Kalanick, who's a little bit of a jerk, um, bro culture, masculine. Yeah, it wasn't my thing. Right. And the winner, the undisputed champion of of rides, right, Sharon? It's Uber. I, I I can't even think Lyft can survive now. Uber is seeing strength across the board, and consumer spending on services is strong. Their first quarter trip growth accelerated versus fourth quarter. The company will be gap profitable, generally accepted accounting prof, uh, policies. Sometime this year, twenty percent of airport drop offs are now reserved ahead of the time. The company has been gaining category share in mobility. Freight delivery prices are coming down, but prices are settling out. That's just some of the numbers. Rider and driver incentives continue to decline due to a healthy balance between driver supply and ride share demand. The balance of the marketplace is pushing Uber's take rate higher, which improved by 540 basis points to 28.9%. Company has kept a tight lid on expenses and hiring as the net number of employees decreased modestly in the first quarter. These are everything you want to hear. And the stock's up roughly 10% on this news. Uber 
got into food delivery big when ride shares went down due to covid they've exceeded expectations across the board posting record profitability and free cash flow for the first quarter um People are taking Ubers to the dinner, but they're also calling Uber to bring them Uber Eats. Whether it's travel, entertainment, dining out, they're gaining market share from Lyft. Um, overall, it was a very strong report for Uber, highlighting its ability of profitability to capitalize ultimately on profitability on the healthy rideshare market and the resilience of the delivery business. Um, I'm not saying the fight's completely over, but I say good for Uber. That was a really good quarter. And that's what earnings season. Um, I absolutely adore it. Check today is down 40% after the company says chat GPT is killing its business. This is going to happen. Ashton Kusher, Ashton Kusher. You know, the guy from the 70s show. You know, the ridiculously good looking man who's married to the ridiculously good-looking woman who does the Cheetos commercial. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. He came out and said something today, and he's a big tech investor, and he's really good at it, surprisingly, because he looked at the character he played on the 70s show. It was stupid. And that Americans were like, you must be stupid, because he played stupid pretty good. Thank you to accepting the actor for voices on a radio show, Rob Black. <laughs> I just played stupid. Thank you very much. For the record, I think I'm the only person um, who didn't like Forrest Gump. Ah. <laughs> I'm not saying it wasn't a good movie. I just didn't enjoy it. So Chegg is developing its own AI product, Chegg Mate which is meant to help students with their homework. The product is built in collaboration with OpenAI, which develops ChatGPT. But I've played it with ChatGPT enough, and Joe Rogan did. Someone created a whole fake Joe Rogan podcast, and it upset Joe Rogan how good it was. ChatGPT, if you haven't played with it, you must. It is dang entertaining. It's the fastest app ever as far as growing numbers. It was wildfire. That should be its name because it spread like a, I was going to say a plague, but maybe that's too soon to the pandemic, right? So check down 40% today because they, they're, they're trying to sell goods that help students with their homework and help students with their college work. Um, and college students are saying, write me a paper on Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare in French. And it'll do it. Um, it'll do three paragraphs. It'll do five paragraphs. It'll do 15 paragraphs. So Chegg going down. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Big event coming up in Marin this weekend called Pints and Portfolio. It's for those of you with $500,000 or more investable assets, probably 50, 55, 60 years old, 65, heading towards retirement, and you want a good second opinion, uh, are you there? CFP Dan Fetterman will be offering a complimentary portfolio review checklist of where you are with a Zoom call. We won't do that at the event because there's alcohol and alcohol and financial advice don't mix but we'll schedule a meeting afterwards and I'd love to meet you. Fine. You have to give us some information in order to come sign up at Rob Black Show, Rob Black Show, Pints and Portfolios. For more information about EP Wealth, visit robblack.com. That's robblack.com.